last week and hurts my soul yo, too. Because yo, yo, yo. I don't know if I feel like motherfucking yelling. At <laughs> but I might because but you guys might. know how I motherfucking get down. I might get down. All right, man. <laughs> Welcome to the next episode of Talk Smack with Mac. I'm with my big dog, Oscar, and this <laughs> motherfucker, man. And we're both a little bit tired. Long ass day, but the grind never stops. What's up, man? That's How you right, doing? bro. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course, man. It's going to be a good one. I'm very interested. I've been wanting to talk to you for a while. You know, I, I think you're doing some dope ass shit in the city. And, oh. you know, you got some talent behind behind the camera. Bro. So it's like, I want to I wanna dive deep and get to know about all of that. Uh yeah, I mean, it takes a, a, a group effort. Uh, it takes a lot of people. Uh, I feel like anything that comes out nowadays, it's like, not me. <laughs> so, you know, but I did have to get pretty decent at working get a camera to, 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 yeah, to get to that point. Nice. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, man. I want to know about you. Where, where, about where, you, where are you from? So, I was born in San Diego, uh, oh, California. One of my favorite places. I was only there for two years. My parents moved to Vegas, oh, and then I grew up you. in Vegas, bro. Yeah. So. All right, so Vegas but kid, pretty, pretty much. Pretty much, Pretty yeah. much. You weren't born here, but shit, fuck it. We Basically. adopted you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were born out here? Yeah, well, oh, born and raised, man. Go. What year? Uh, let 94. Me 94? Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, what about you? 1990. Oh, shit. You're an old-ass man. <laughs> I'm an old-ass man, bro. You could have fooled me. You got the baby face going and a good head of hair. Oh, you don't have go. any grays, you little lucky fuck. Bro, the key is just being happy. <laughs> yep. Hey, amen to that. Shit. Uh, I learned that a little bit later. You know, like 25, 26, got rid of my old girlfriend. I was good to go. Shit. There you go. That's all you need. I was like, bitch, you got to go. You crazy as fuck. <laughs> you giving me grays and shit. I had a whole ass head of hair before I started fucking with her. And it, oh, woo! shit. Military uh, ex-girlfriend, and it went downhill. No. No, man, I'm fucking around. But yeah, so pretty much... Raised in Vegas, well, yeah. born and raised in Vegas, not born, but two years old, man. That's a young age. What part of Vegas yeah. did you grow up in? Bro, uh, so I went to Centennial High School, so like Northwest, kind of not too far from here, honestly. Mm -hmm. My parents' house, they moved there when I was like 16, uh, is like right down the street on Craig and Clayton. Yeah, I remember. So we pulled up like, there that one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, I okay. grew up right around here. How the hell did you, they moved there after you finished high school? N uh, I was like 16 or 17 yeah like 16 i was going to high school still while while they were I, in that house while they moved to that why house why did you go so to then, centennial i just didn't want to change schools instead of going to mm. cheyenne so i just kept they just kept driving me up into school and then i got That's my driver's drive license yeah and then i was able to like drive myself yeah okay <laughs> I was going to say, damn, you skipped like nine schools. Dude. I know. You skipped yeah. Cheyenne, Canyon Springs, Legacy, Shadow yeah. Ridge, Arbor yeah. View. Yeah. What's close? Yeah, Arbor View would be closer yeah. too. So Shit. before that, I grew up, it was like still on Cheyenne, like Cheyenne 215 area. So they moved from up there down okay. to like over gotcha. here. So yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, grew up here. Uh, Shit, what else? <laughs> yeah, you know? when, when did you grab the camera? When did you get started uh, with that? Bro, so... How I actually got into the camera was I was making music, bro. I make beats and rap and like oh, doing all shit. kinds of shit. Yeah, I was doing. You still uh, doing that? Not so much anymore because of work and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, I still feel inspired. Yeah, I make beats. Like, I'll make a couple songs a year, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's how I got started. Is uh, I was making music. I was really bad at it for a long time. For till I got the ten thousand hours in. Um, and then once I started getting pretty decent at it, I was like, just had a realization, like, I got to be in front of a camera. Like, people got to see me mm -hmm. and shit, right? And this was, like, when Instagram's coming out and stuff. So uh, got a camera, started, like, messing with it, whatever. I met uh, one of my boys, Andy, which we've been rocking together for a long time. Uh, and he was, like, just starting with his camera. And we, like, took both of our cameras and we sold them and got a good camera. And then we started uh, doing That's stuff. That's how it usually <laughs> happens, man. I went through about three or four <laughs> shit cameras not knowing. I didn't even know what the fuck to, like, how to uh, work it. I felt kind of stupid. <laughs> not nah, YouTube now, bro. YouTube man. that thing. Um, and then, yeah, uh, we started getting pretty decent. And then someday, one day, someone was like, how much for a video? And I was like, what? We could charge money for this video? <laughs> yes. I've hundy, bro. Run it. Yes. And we did it, bro. First music video. And then I was like, oh, this is it. And I worked in pastries. So that's kind of like right out of high school. I started doing like pastries, working in the casinos, uh, culinary union. Um, so that's what I was doing. And um, I started getting so busy like with uh, video gigs like booking and stuff like that where I had to like make a choice to like leave my job I uh, got in tr actually bro this is a real story 
uncensored version. All right, I was so I sold weed always since I was like <laughs> yes, this is right out I'm of high school, about. right? <laughs> Used to sell weed, and so I was always like really busy selling weed, and I sold weed to everyone in the restaurant, and so that was booming. And then this the fucking videography business started booming. And uh, so I started getting, like, calling in sick a lot, getting reckless at work, whatever, going stoned all the time. And uh, I went, like, super baked one day. Like, it was when cookies first hit the streets, bro. And my boy was like, oh, this I'm shit is... I'm the excitement in your eyeballs right now. <laughs> my boy was like, Yo, cookies. <laughs> the cookie shit? Bro, that was a treat back in the yeah. day. Like, you couldn't just get it. And uh, so, yeah, had a little bit of that. And he's like, yo, this shit is crazy. And I had a routine, right? I would, like, smoke. And then I'd, like, get ready for work, go to work, whatever, by the time I'm like walking through the door, I'm like, you know, calm, like everything's cool, I'm back mm -hmm. to normal. This time I was still fucking baked. Like I was giggling and shit with everybody. And I had just called off work for like four days in a row or some shit. So oh, I came back, fuck. management was pissed. <laughs> and I'm like happy, you know, laughing, bullshit with everybody. The fucking uh, chefs uh, were pissed. They're like, yo, come see me. I was like, ah, oh, shit. And uh, I thought, I was tripping. I was baked. I was like, ah, oh, shit. So I go into the paranoia office. Paranoia started kicking in, <laughs> huh? <laughs> go in the office and they're like, all right, we're going to write you up. Uh, you've called in X amount of times. This is your last point. You call in again. You're terminated. And I was like, I started laughing, like cracking up because I was like, oh, shit, that ain't even that serious. Like, ah, all good. Cool. Give me that shit. That's all. All right. Peace. And then I <laughs> walked out and then fucking like, bro, five minutes later, like uh, the security walked up to my like station with like fucking handcuffs and shit. It looked like they were like about to arrest me i was like what the fuck and they're like yeah come with us i was like what happened and they're like the chef was like i think you're on drugs or under the influence of alcohol because uh your eyes were dilated and i was like what we're in a dark room it was low light like yeah. I was fucking yeah and i was like well i smoke weed bro honestly like i'll keep it real with you so if you go drug test me weed's gonna show up and he's like all right well oh shit i already made the call i can't take it back i was like all right well let's roll let's roll this out so then Boom, went, uh, did the thing, took me to the drug test. Uh, they found weed, and then, uh, yeah, I went back. They were like, uh, I was suspended pending investigation, and then uh, <laughs> came back. They are like, yeah, we're going to have to terminate you, but then they, like, cashed me out on, like, my 401k and all that. They're like, yeah, you get everything. You're good. It's not. We're not going to take it away. So that was it, basically, and after that, I was like, oh, shit, all right, I'm out here. So I was like, Pathfinder uh, was born, honestly, and then... Um, but Perfect this has, segue. This has a double-edged sword. This leads to my second biggest failure. So the weed business starts booming, right? I um I no longer oops, sorry. Rookie mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so no longer have a job. Um video business is going pretty good. So I'm like, all right, I know what I'm for sure certain on is like selling a lot of weed. So started selling weed, uh, started, I was uh, a pastry chef. So I can make like cookies and edibles and all kinds of shit. So I started making edibles and I started selling them to like different delivery services and shit. And then one guy was like, yo, this shit is crazy. You should fucking start your own delivery service. And I was like, what does that even mean? And he's like, <laughs> bro, you just advertise on like weed maps and where's weed. And in those days, you didn't have to have a lot of paperwork. This was like 2016. They're like 15. It was like pretty like not as regulated. It wasn't legal yet and shit. So I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So then I did it. He like showed me how. I started paid for like the little advertisement. And all of a sudden it was like, boom, dude, exploded. Like weed business is blown up. I started carrying like <laughs> fucking bongs and like different little like batteries for vapes and shit. Hire a driver, like blowing up, bro. It's <laughs> selling like a half pound of weed a day. Like it was going crazy. And I was like, oh, this is it, bro. We fucking made it. I'm going to be rich. And then uh, so that lasted for like maybe six months. And then the DEA like just started like following me around. And Fuck. I was like... I told my mom, because I still lived at my <laughs> parents' house. I was like, had this no bills, amazing. bro. I had nothing. I was just stacking up bread. And uh, so I told my mom. I'm like, you paid taxes? No that's taxes? what they told me, bro. No taxes. No, they wasn't paying taxes. That's oh. what they busted me for. Oh. So anyways, yeah. So I tell my mom, and uh, they're pretty supportive about like my weed business, because I'm like baking cookies in the kitchen and shit, and like making the butter and cannabis and all that shit. So... They were pretty progressive about it. They're like, whatever, he's doing his thing. And uh, I never thought I could get in trouble. I was like, it's just fucking weed. Like, that was my whole <laughs> shit always. I was like, bro, it's just weed. Everybody That's what smokes every weed. every pothead <laughs> says. It's just weed. It's just weed, bro. <laughs> so, uh, so then, yeah, what happened? Oh, okay. So I tell my mom, like, someone's following me around. And she's like, no fucking way. No, who do you think you are? You think you're a celebrity? I started getting a little <laughs> bit of, like, 
clout on Instagram. Like, I'm starting to get followers and shit. And she's like, who are you from? Is that coming from the from weed the music, or both? From everything. the weed, from both. Yeah, I'm, like, outside every yeah. day at the studio, <laughs> like, making a lot of uh, just fucking force in the universe. You know, mm -hmm. putting a lot of energy in this shit. And uh, so I'm getting a little pop in. Someone's following me. She's like, no fucking way. So I started doing this. I, like would go to the gym at a certain time, like uh, every day, like seven in the morning, whatever. And then I was like, you know what? I'm about to fuck with these guys. Uh, Cause then I would notice like how I caught it was I would notice that sometimes I'd go at different times, like 1 PM and then the same fucking like four people were always there. And I always felt like they were always staring at me and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm catching on to them. I'm like, these fuckers are following me. And then, um, so I'm like, I'm about to fuck with them. I'm gonna go to the gym at like three in the morning. So I went to the gym, like woke up at three in the morning, went to the gym and there's no one in the fucking gym and these fuckers are all like pissed off like looking at me like this motherfucker i'm like oh these fuckers are following me tested it again i went at five all same four people like staring at me i'm like oh dude all right i was like i think you should have like, you should have went to the gym came home and then went back to the gym immediately <laughs> so i was at that point i'm like oh fuck i think i'm in trouble or something like that day they fucking busted me um I was like doing my deliveries. So I had like a driver and then I would still do deliveries too. They pull me over. They fucking, uh, it was just a regular car. I was like, what the fuck is this? And lights. Then a guy comes up and fucking opens my door and yanks me out of the car. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? I like look at him like, what? And he's like, you see this badge? You think I'm a regular fucking cop? I was like, uh, I guess not. <laughs> like, sorry, bro. <laughs> um, boom. Anyways, they fucking like surround me. They're like, we know you're a kingpin drug operator. I was like, oh. what the fuck? That was literally the words they said. I was like, I think you got the wrong guy, bro. I was like, I saw weed and shit. <laughs> like, you know? So, uh, then yeah, they raid my studio. Oh, here's the crazy part, bro. I don't think I ever even said this part and on live camera. Hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me. Coming back here for <laughs> talk smack with so, that breaking I would, news. Uh, leverage you know leverage a lot of weed you like you buy a pound and the fucking distributor will be like take two pounds whatever it's like credit but in the streets right mm -hmm. so i had a lot of weed leverage like i don't even know like five pounds and i would keep it in a guitar fucking bag and bro they tore the fucking studio apart and I don't know what they took, like my edibles and some other shit. And I'm like, fuck, I'm fucked. I'm looking at the letter. I get back in there, whatever. They're like, uh, they let me go. So this also is a true story. I think I've said it on another podcast. So I'm like handcuffed. They're, they're like, do you want to go to jail? Or you want to go home? It's a fucking line out of training day, right? I was like, I want to go home. They're like, all right, well, you know anyone with drugs or fucking guns? And I was like, bro, I sell weed. Like, I don't know what, the, who the fuck you think I am. Like, if you know about me, then you would know I just sell weed. And he's like, yeah, but you know people. I was like, I don't fucking know. I'm not asking like, hey, you got drugs or guns? Like, you know, so uh, they're like, all right, well, we're going to let you go, but you're going to work for us. And I was like, what the what? fuck? Yeah, bro, straight up. So I'm looking at the warrant. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? I like call my mom like, yo, this happened. I call like all my homies like, yo, stay away from me. I just got fucking raided. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, How old were you at the time? I was 25. So, um, I'm 33 now. So, I, I'm an older guy. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm seasoned. I'll say, I'll, yeah, seasoned <laughs> is the perfect word. Experienced, maybe, Experienced. but you're, you're not old. Uh, yeah, we're, because I'm fucking right around the corner. So, uh, <laughs> if you're old, bro. I'm going to be old very quickly. Shit. We're, we're all getting old. We're all not as young as we used to. Hey, you know, Let's the key is, man, way. is to fucking stay in shape. 100%. Never stay out of the gym good sh uh fucking eat good too like oh, eat that, everything organic um single drink. ingredient foods is yeah. what i harp on yeah bro because if there's only one ingredient in that shit you you should know what you're getting yeah bro a carrot it's carrot yeah. a potato <laughs> steak <laughs> ground beef yeah you know eggs yeah, shit yeah. like that keep it very yeah, oatmeal cage free organic yep. fucking mm -hmm. i don't know about your water what type of water you're drinking, but, you know, we have a reverse osmosis machine mm -hmm. with the Kangen water filter, so... All that shit, bro. All that shit matters. It That's makes why people a, it are makes like, a difference. It you makes look a young. I'm difference. like, shit. I'm Take care happy of myself. And I'm yeah. healthy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I, that's part of my affirmations. I tell myself that in the morning when I'm waking up. Like, I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm strong. I'm rich. I'm powerful. Let's fucking go. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. Positive uh, thoughts. Sprinkling po you know what? I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> What, bro? Right when you wake up, I'm gonna first... wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, and I say, "I'd fuck me." Hundred percent. 
I'm what anything you want to be. But I I do it right when it, so I my alarm goes off at five, and then I'll fucking dilly dally for like fifteen minutes. And in those 15 half asleep, half awake uh, minutes is when I'll do like affirmations or programming like my mind and my brain and like my desires. So Mm -hmm. like things that I'm working on, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm this, I'm that, I'm doing this. I have this coming through. This is going to happen. What a great day. It's going to be fantastic. Fuck yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I'm rich. I'm powerful. And then if I catch myself like thinking about other shit, like work, I'm like, no, go back. Rich, I'm powerful. Whatever the Mm -hmm. affirmations are. So um how how do you feel like that has helped you bro i create my reality like you know what i mean no that it's there's like um there's like certain laws and principles to the universe to everything that exists in this dimension all over right Mm -hmm. and if you do certain things a certain way you get certain results it's like the gym you go fucking lift 100 pounds 100 days in a row you're gonna fucking be pretty yoked probably you know i'm definitely (laughs) doing it wrong then (laughs) fuck (laughs) Ah, 100 pounds (laughs) but you know what i mean you do the you do the ritual you do the routine the workout the diet you get Mm -hmm. the results and then it just happens no matter what it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter what you doesn't matter like your circumstances your situations you do these certain things you eat this certain way you're gonna get your fucking results yeah. it's the same thing with the like the universe with anything you desire or anything you choose to experience it's just the same the same you yeah. do certain things affirmations reading um visualization meditation um what else do i do um uh pl- like your next five moves like visualize like okay i'm gonna graduate uh college then i'm gonna be an accountant but now i'm gonna be an accountant and then i'm gonna get my podcast popping then i'm gonna get my podcast popping then i'm gonna meet joe rogan like that's like five moves like you know what mm-hmm. i mean so like uh doing that um helps me a lot like to to like stay forecast grounded, stay for- uh, focused yeah yeah mm-hmm. so focus a lot on uh the mind the body uh like whatever i'm trying to output i don't know if it makes sense because no, it's like 100 percent it like, does man um yeah it's like when you're I heard this metaphor. It's really dope. It's like, okay, when you first learned math, you're like, you have to be like, this is two things. Like, right? You put a paper clip down. That's one. That's two. You don't even know what one or two is. You have to learn what one or two is. Then you learn one or two, and then you learn addition and subtraction and division and geometry and fucking whatever else, right? And it takes so many years to get to that point. Um, and same with like what I consider like mind powers or universe powers is like, it takes a lot of years of like understanding like the law of attraction or affirmations or whatever to finally start to implement it and put it into place and regularly benefit from those, I don't know, rewards that those things bring, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah. One, we got stoned, so I don't know how I got down that route. <laughs> down no, that it's, route. It's, it's the best things, man. <laughs> um, I, I look at, I guess positive thoughts you know you're feeding your soul positive thoughts you can either feed your soul bullshit or you can feed yourself some good shit and when you're saying those things out loud it's just feeding yourself positive thoughts and you know whether you're faking it till you make it or you fucking you really mean that shit either way you're gonna start listening 100 percent. you do that long enough and and you start to be be that like Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like same thing like (laughs) being an actor right you have a a vision or a desire to be an actor so then you start acting and doing Mm -hmm. things and being in projects and being around the cameras and stuff like that and that and that all sprouts from like a thought an idea uh an intention and then that like materializes into a reality and then you continue down that doing that over and over and over again for certain things or whatever you you get there like that's the thing what i've noticed uh just with time it's like you really get there you get what you desire as long as you stay focused on it and think about it and are persistent and consistent like the gym yeah. you know what mm-hmm. i mean i know you're fucking yoked i'd be seeing your stories you're like oh <laughs> bro <laughs> just, just a little something something <laughs> i like to hide it underneath these clothes <laughs> yeah, yeah you know yeah. this extra medium that i'm wearing <laughs> That's you a lot. Tuck it all you look good. <laughs> <laughs> i try man i try uh, uh stay tuned stay tuned <laughs> But no, man, um, I, I 100% believe that. I, th- I feel like with me, I, I, I lack on the positive thoughts and speaking to myself. And uh, I shit you not, that's something that I started this week. Nice. Was started speaking positive, uh, positively out loud to myself. Nice. You know, thinking it is one thing, but I feel like I need to start speaking it. I need to start slowing down and loving myself. I do things out of love for myself. But I started thinking, do I really sit down and love myself? Do I say it enough? Do I mean it? Do I hear it? 
Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, listening to you, I, I feel like some of these podcasts, bro, is, is like answers to like maybe things that I'm dealing with or, or, or questions that I may have. And then I have somebody on the podcast and that idea pops up and we discuss it. It's Literally like, holy shit, shit. We're the from, universe is listening, motherfucker. The universe is talking to me, baby. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah, dope, man. Bro. That's for sure. Loving yourself. That's a... That's it's huge. huge. Yeah, like you, write like it you down. Said, you can write it down, too. That like, it's like, I don't, I guess I don't say it. I do say, so I go to LVAC, my house is like literally two minutes away from it. So like on my drive home, that two minutes, I just say out loud like things I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I'm never, I guess I don't say a lot of my affirmations out loud. I should. You could like, and if you want to amplify it, there's this, I forget what book it is, but it literally talks about like talk to yourself in the mirror, say whatever you need to say with conviction. And that shit like literally... The, in the book, the story goes that, like, he saw this, like, super wealthy guy, and he got fucking shit-faced, and he was at, like, a fundraiser for his, like, huge corporate, they were raising, like, hundreds of millions of dollars, and all of a sudden, he's fucked up, and it's his, like, <laughs> company and shit, and he's like, oh, shit, I'm fucked up, so he's like, <laughs> he's like, I didn't mean to watch this, but literally, I, uh, he's like, I was going to the bathroom and I saw him like just talking to himself in the mirror like, I'm sober, get yourself together, you're good. And he's like, I saw his body like position and like get straight and all of a sudden he's like, he went and he did his fucking speech and he did everything. He's like, the soberest could be. He's like, this dude crazy. was like, he's like, this is crazy. You could do that shit for yourself and then kind of like goes mind. into that. Yeah, so yeah, your mind could do anything like that. Um, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. uh, loving yourself. I also was listening to this uh, book on not on my way here, but earlier today. And it talks about, I thought it was really dope. It's like, I don't know what your uh, belief is, but like God, um, the universe, infinite intelligence, positive vibrations, whatever your uh, definition of higher power or whatever mm -hmm. is, right? Um, it's everywhere. It's permeating space. It's in every atom. It's in every molecule, right? Like God's in everything. It's the consistent energy wavelength, which is the ultimate intelligence, is in everything. Mm -hmm. Um so if it's in everything, that means it must be inside my mind. And if God loves you, like this goes back to like, you know, if God loves me and God, God loves his creatures and he's inside of me and I am part of it, that means that I must be loved like at a really high level, like at the level of God. And then it starts to bring out like a vibration that you're like, you feel really good. You know, you feel it in your chest and um, shit, I'm feeling it now. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you can feel it, but. <laughs> no, that's that fire um, weed. That's a fire weed. That's, yeah. that's what you call a body. Huh? <laughs> uh, but but yeah, um, loving yourself is very important. I guess yeah. just to elaborate on that. That's, that will get you through the lows of life because you're gonna have your highs, you're gonna have your lows. But if you're loving yourself at all times, you're gonna be able to make it through. Yeah, and with a smile on your face. A hundred percent. It doesn't even feel like a low. I feel like mentality is uh is everything is everything yeah like you know it, when a bad thing happens uh it's happening for your best interest you want to hear another fucking story okay Maybe. went to buy a house right fucking down the street from here on clayton and on the other side of craig like a, behind by the walmart like across mm -hmm. the street bro we we're about to buy a house we put the earnest deposit down right down the like street five, from your mom. yeah right down the street five grand down uh and then the deal fell apart and lost the five grand of earnest money I was super upset, right? Oh. I was like, oh, man, that fucking broke my heart. And this was right before we were about to have the baby, so we, like, needed oh, a place to go, damn. whatever. Uh, it was uh, a fucking crazy situation, right? Uh, it was upsetting. But me and my wife were like, you know, something better has to be coming. There's no other way. God would not have done that. Again, I'm not super religious. I don't, I'm not, like, you know pray all the time or anything but the universe wouldn't have done that for you if there wasn't something better there mm -hmm. must be like when something goes wrong you gotta pop the champagne because that means there's something better that's happening so I've 100 that was agree. literally the the affirmation we were saying is like something's going wrong pop the champagne so we're like let's go celebrate we literally went to a nice dinner we like went and celebrated we're like somehow this has got to be a good thing two weeks later a house for the same price i think it, we're gonna buy it for 350 it's in basically South Summerlin, way like, I mean, I love the community and I grew up here. I personally think it's a, a cooler neighborhood, right? Better neighborhood, more equity in the house that like we were going to get because it was like 2020. So it, we made, it just worked out way better. Like mm -hmm. everything worked out. We got that house. We moved right into it. It was like super quick close. It was just 
done. You and it that, was so you got that COVID equity. Yeah, and in, in, literally in, in Summerland, so you know that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, You got that bitch for three fifty. It's probably like six fifty seven like, now. Yeah, it's like almost five. <laughs> you know, almost what I mean? five. Yeah, so, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was giving them Summerlin folks too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it's not that crazy up there, but yeah, but so stop, so, stop, <laughs> stop. You talking to a true uh, East Side North Town uh, kid right here, man? Hey. Them Summerlin folks got it good up there. Uh, their water's different. The water is fucking. Different. Their clothes the are different. <laughs> They don't got no tattoo parlors up there. They don't have no fucking uh, uh, easy loans or payday uh, loans. They don't got none of that no shit. Fuck yeah, what's Their gas called? is cheaper, which I don't understand. It's just better in Summerlin. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> fuck y'all. Uh, so it was cool. Um, it worked out. You know what I mean? So it's a blessing. So every time you feel like a low is happening, it's uh, some some's brewing for you. Some's like... About to fucking blow up for you. Now, when have you had that mindset? What well, age do you feel like? When did I acquire that? Um, but that's strong shit. Um, bro, uh, gradually. So I was twenty twenty. I was thirty. Um, I don't think I really. Uh, so okay. So even further back before my fucking jail story. Oh, I didn't even finish. Anyways, went to jail, got out. Everything's good. <laughs> um, he didn't snitch on anybody. Didn't or... snitch on nobody. Got a lawyer. Lost all my money. It was good. Oh, yeah, you got bro. to pay back everything that you no, that you. I, so made? I only had like twenty or thirty grand, and I spent it all on a lawyer. I was like, I'm gonna get the best lawyer. Fuck mm -hmm. it, I'm gonna be safe. Nope. So I had to go to jail. <laughs> so, How long uh, were you in jail? Not long, like fucking twenty eight days or whatever. They just held that's, me. They that's held me. Fucking twenty eight days too long. Shit. Yeah, way <laughs> too that. long. I'm never going. I pay so much taxes now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm legit as can be, bro. <laughs> uh, you need a better uh, accountant if you're paying too much motherfucking taxes. Yeah. Hey, good thing I know my man. Hey, hey we fuck need with a, me. We need a if you need a bookkeeper, let me know. I got you. I know a guy. Oh, uh, we know a guy. Ooh, talks <laughs> back with Mac. Get your books right. <laughs> yeah. That's a plug right there. I'll fucking uh, star in your movie and do your taxes uh, afterwards, baby. Let's What's fucking up? go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. fuck with me. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, what was, oh, so I, well, I was trying to get that mindset going further back. Uh, 2013, I was 23. I opened my first business, went bankrupt, lost everything first biggest failure that failure changed my mindset i was very negative and very depressed and unhappy up until that point i don't think i even knew what happiness was mm -hmm. so i lost everything and i was stripped away from like everything and it made me i was able to have a fresh start i was only 23 or whatever but i was like okay all i want to do is be happy from now uh, on what like, was the that's business? it uh, it was called Truck Mount Garage. It was a mechanic shop I started with my dad. Mm -hmm. My dad was super shot out, like on drugs, drinking all the time, whatever. The business got really busy. I don't know how to fix shit. And so like the labor was dependent on him and it just fell apart. Um, mm -hmm. But it was a great learning experience. Um, anyways, yeah, so I just want to be happy. So from ha from that point until 24, 25, that was like, I was just focusing on being happy, meditating, doing Tai Chi, like Jim always has been consistent. Um, and I was a happy dude. I was just super fucking happy. I liked weed. I, I accidentally started selling weed. Like I didn't mean to. My, I just got like a fucking eighth. And my one homie was like, let me get a dub. And my other homie was like, let me get a dub. I was like, whoa, I made 40 bucks and I got a <laughs> gram to smoke. This is this dope. Is <laughs> and so then fucking... <laughs> So, I fuck with it. I fuck so, with it. Yeah. yeah, then it was like a quarter, a zip, two zips, a half pound, quarter pound, whatever, all the way. Um, Man, this shit is going quick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that took a couple years. So then business started being okay, right? And then I started having money and working and having money. And then uh, business, like, uh, went to jail again. And after, or no, that only went to jail once. <laughs> I met the second failure. I had a massive life failing, like, failure. So I had to restart again. And I when I restarted the second time, I started doing like self development, like Tony Robbins, fucking mm -hmm. Think and Grow Rich, whatever. Just I could get my hands on at that point, point. and then that was two thousand like seventeen, and up and since then I've been like super consistent on like so self development. About twenty seven. Yeah, about twenty. Yeah, I was twenty seven. So yeah, twenty seven. Something happens around that age where bro. it's just like I don't really want to be like that anymore. Yeah. Because I, I I was a, a very negative person growing up. Um, like mad and frustrated all the time yeah you know 
uh, thought the world owed me something or, you know, yeah. silly being a silly kid. Yeah. And then I got to too. the point I was like, I don't really want to fucking frown anymore. I'd rather laugh and smile. It, <laughs> fucking, it feels better. Yeah. And weed was like instrumental because up until that point, I didn't smoke weed. 23. I, I, yeah. And I then, started smoking boom. weed at 20. When did I get out of the military? Like 23, 24. Yeah. yeah. That's when I started. That's a great age to start smoking weed. <laughs> I, I fucking I agree. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, that helped me be happy. And yeah. then, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, self-development. I mean, still, obviously, when shit goes uh, haywire now, it's just, like, trying to detach myself from it and be like, mm -hmm. this is crazy. Uh, I wonder how this is going to play out. Everything's going to work out. We're going to be all right. You um, could break things down a lot easier for oh, what it yeah. is. Instead, of, like instead of being overwhelmed right. and feeling like the, the, the world's going to yeah, end and exactly. shit. Yeah, exactly. You're able to take a step back and say, well, f all right, that fucking sucks. Yeah. But why does it suck? Right. And, and what are we going to fucking do about it? Yeah. Because ain't nobody coming to save me. So nobody what am I going to do about it? to save me, bro. Yeah, 100%. And, and if you take it even a step further, is you like, un when you start to, I'm not that I fully fucking understand, like, but cause and effect. Then you're like, okay, I got this effect. I'm fucked right now, mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be, right? It's Why like, did this happen? How did that happen? Mm -hmm. What did I do to cause this effect? Because obviously I fucking did it, right? Like, it's my life. It's not like someone's living it for me. Mm -hmm. I created this fucking situation. How did I get to this situation? Okay, cool. If I don't want those results again, then just don't do that shit again. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Don't, don't be insane. <laughs> yeah, we'll, so we'll, let's change it up a little different, bit. Different fucking cause gets you a different effect. Cool, I like this cause. Mm -hmm. I like that effect. Let's do that. You know what I mean? Let's, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that what I don't know. And I'm still constantly just trying to learn know some new shit. <laughs> I feel like that's an ever process, man, or ever journey, if you yeah. will. The journey of life is a journey of learning. Right. Because, one, I think you'd be a stupid motherfucker to say, I've learned enough. <laughs> I don't think I, I need to know no more shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't need to know anything else. I got this shit figured out. I got it. I got it down. Yeah, fuck it. This is how life is. <laughs> <laughs> this life, man, this shit is easy. I'm fucking 23 and I've, I've fucking learned it all already. You know what's funny is I, have, I just hired two kids that work for me. They're pretty young. One's like 18 and the other one's like 20. Mm -hmm. And they be trying young kid shit all the time. Because when you're that age, you think you know everything. And you don't know shit. And you see their plays like so shit. many fucking far, so far away. And uh, you're like... Bro, you think you're playing? Do you think you're playing me? Like, you think this shit works? And then you got to break it down for them, like, because you did this and this and this, and then that happened, right? And then they're like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to come in, but then I didn't know I was going to come in. So I'm just going to start coming in at that time now from now on. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> you fuck know? me, right? You know, I don't know. <laughs> it's just silly. And it's just silly kid shit. But we were like that. I was like that too. I used to think I knew everything. I remember my dad would tell me shit, and he was always like shot out, like, uh, drunk or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even know he was doing drugs until after the business fell apart or whatever. And I was like, oh, you've been doing drugs my whole life. That makes sense. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> I can relate on so many levels. So, fucking, uh, I would, when I was a kid, he would tell me shit and I'd be like, you don't fucking know anything. <laughs> you, you don't know shit, bro. I got this. Don't worry. And then he would be right about certain things or whatever and I'd be like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> you know? You gotta learn. And I've always been that that's why I uh, fucking operate a business or do whatever is because I had so much trouble with like anyone telling me anything or yeah, trying to someone be like, do it this way. I'd be like, well, I'm going to try it that way. And I might burn my hand, but I'd rather burn my fucking hand than someone tell me not to burn my hand. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So some people got to learn the hard way. I'm, I'm the <laughs> same way, bro. Like yeah. you could tell me, hey, if you go over there, you're going to step in glass and I'm going to go. I, the view's pretty nice over there. I might check it out. I gotta out. try it, man. <laughs> maybe, maybe you just fucked it up. Let me try it. Ah, I'm stepping glass. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck. All right, he was right. Don't do that again. Yeah, well, <laughs> watch out for glass from now on. <laughs> I, I swear, going into my 30s, man, I'm gonna start taking that, that high, clean road. At least I tell myself that, you know? <laughs> I'm still going to fucking choose the, the straight rocky mountain to climb instead of the straight, you know, perfectly paved yeah. road. Well, I think you got to for sure, like, challenge yourself always. Yeah. Take the hard, the hard route is always a more rewarding route. It's got the better scene, you know. <laughs> God damn it. Yep. Yep, it is. But yeah. in the moment, sometimes it's like, why the fuck did I put myself in this position? <laughs> I choose true, to do some true. weird shit, man. Like like butt things or what? Oh no! 
Hey, shout out to the gay people, <laughs> but it's not my kidding. thing at all. Uh, you know, even like a finger, like a fingernail, that's not my thing. No, I'm talking about like other butt, like you in the butt <laughs> things. I mean, that shit is gay. Oh, if I'm in the butt, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm in, hell yeah, shit, that's my shit. I got whips and chains. Ask about me, uh, shit. shit. You seen um, uh, what's the what's the one? Oh, God damn it, the the fucking sex book, and they made a movie. Oh, out of a it. Karma Sutra. Nope, no, no. that ain't the one. I don't know. And they made a movie about it? Oh, Fifty Gray, Shades of Grey. Shades of Grey. I've uh, never read or saw it. Uh, I've been around and I've like ear hustled uh, some women reading it out loud and shit. But that's like probably some shit I'm on. I'd be on that shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, no. when you get a little bit older, it's like, and, and when you're with the right one, it's like, man, <laughs> let's get a little weird. Let's do some crazy shit. As soon as you get one, it's like, man, you know, put the, put the, you know, Do the, some weird the gag shit. in my mouth and fucking hog tie uh, me and beat my ass type shit. Hey. I'm like, look, I ain't gonna hurt you too bad unless you ask me. But I try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's uh, funny. Man, you ever uh, did the? Uh, I call it the milk tank. It's, it's, a, it's the rusty trombone, I believe, but I call I it the milk tank. I don't know that one either. All right, so that's when you. <laughs> You assume the position as a man, right? Spread the cheeks open, oh, shit. And you face in the pillow or Ooh, in the bed, whatever it is, and she just goes in there and just fucking eat your ass while jerking you off down. What? That's why I call it the milk tank, like oh, the Pokemon. The milky, <laughs> the milky way. I don't yeah. know. Never heard that one. We have to try it. I'm married and I'm, shit. I'm now, not so. a fan. I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my thing. I tried it once, and I just I felt so like not in position. <laughs> You're like, hey, something ain't right here. <laughs> yeah. Even she she came up. She said, Yeah, I don't like it either. <laughs> Fuck the trombone. <laughs> it's extra rusty. We'll move on from this one. <laughs> Good oh, shit. shit. Hey man, so when you picked up the camera, man, you were making music videos. You made five hundred dollars a pop. Yeah. Where'd it go from there? Shit, bro. I mean, fast forward now. There's a lot of what, so yeah, jail. Then got out. Then so I made Pathfinder before jail, uh, but then I uh, when I got out, got a regular like casino job again, mm -hmm. and then I still had Pathfinder and it was slow. It's crazy, you can get a casino job still after this. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right back in the Culinary Union, bro. Um, <laughs> the fucking, Culinary Union's taking everybody. <laughs> everybody, bro. They just strike striked and got some more money. So if you're looking for an opportunity. Culinary I work at the Union? Culinary College. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> As an account. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, shout out to them. Shout out to them, bro. Yeah, so freaking uh, got out, and I was back working, and Pathfinder, so, like, I was still doing gigs, like, you know what I mean? Like, here and there, stacking up, got my, like, my own apartment and stuff, uh, and then I met my wife and it's kind of like ever since then, that's like the chapter that she came in, uh, met my wife, Pathfinder was still in its infancy. Uh, and she inspired me when we were dating or whatever. She just straight up quit her job. Like she was, uh, in the financial service industries, uh, forget whatever, like, uh, her degrees. In. But anyways, she graduated college, got a job, did the, did the thing. Um, and she was in the, whatever, selling annuities, whatever the financial service industry. I'm not super clear on what they do. They just mm -hmm. sell hopes and dreams, <laughs> but yeah. people buying them. So anyways, she was like, this life ain't for me, whatever. Quit her job, cold turkey, bro. Just like no plan, no nothing, just left. And that was right before I met her. So I met her, she had already like quit her job. So she was doing like, uh, you know, we get a lot of conventions. She was doing like the, uh, working the conventions, doing like the modeling or whatever, handing out flyers for them and shit. Mm -hmm. So she was doing that, um, making ends meet, whatever. And then I met her, we met her at, uh, at a, uh, like a group photo shoot or something. I, they actually hit me up to be a model. So I like went, she was a model. We we're like chopping it up, whatever. Boom. Models doing modeling. Models things. doing modeling and shit. And then, uh, yeah, I met my wife. Uh, we started like really, she was like, you got to quit your job. Just do Pathfinder or just my first. She was like really supportive of music. So she was like, just do music. Uh, so I quit my job just to do music. But then I was like engineering, selling beats, doing like little shows. And the videos were still always paying the majority of the bills. Like I would leverage a, a one music video here, one music video there, whatever. And then it would pay the bills. And then I just was like, all right, bro, why don't I just go all in on the video company and then this is always my thought like i'll just get rich and then i'll just do music again and then i'll do it from like 
marketing point. I'll be able to leverage all the shit that I can't leverage. So then mm -hmm. I was like, all right, cool. And it was kind of like an identity crisis because I started making music when I was young, like 20, 21. And I like saw it out, bro. I did everything. Like I was hardcore committed about it. And um, my records towards the end got pretty good. Like they were good. I was really bad for a long time, for like 10 years. And then they got good for like a year or two. And then I was like, all right, I got to do Pathfinder or whatever. And it was like an identity crisis, kind of like I had to like shed that skin and shift identities. And that was kind of challenging. But anyways, went in on the on the uh, Pathfinder and then shit started taking off um, financially. Uh, we had like a little one bedroom apart or not even a, like a studio. We had a studio apartment when we moved in together. Um, then we got like another apartment and then, oh, then when I was roommates with like my cousin, went through all the shit. But meanwhile, Pathfinder is growing. Like mm -hmm. I'd start cracking the code on like doing monthly retainer clients. So I start stacking them up. Um, and then 2020, uh, everything shut down and we started an eBay business and made our first like hundred grand on eBay. Like first money Doing ever. What? Just selling shit on eBay. Just buying and selling? Yeah. Buy so I have one of my mentor. I call him my mentor. His name's Roy. He owns Gold and Beyond. I'm looking for one of those. <laughs> I, I really am. And uh, he was one of my first uh, retainer clients. Uh, and he was like, you want to make some money? Everything shut down, whatever. I was like, all right, cool. So uh, he's like, sell your shit on eBay. And we had an old eBay account that had a lot of reviews and stuff. So we started selling his shit and we we're making commission on it doing all the shipping packing he would just give us like a ton of inventory and started stacking it up i made my first like 10 grand selling his stuff and made him 100 grand or whatever and uh i was like okay i'm gonna take this money and i'm gonna buy my own inventory so we started buying like amazon return pallets like i don't know if you've seen those on like facebook uh mm -mm. stuff like that yeah just buying just all kinds of merchandise so we had like this whole ass room full what is of an amazon return pallet that's, that's just something like, that people return, but they already fucked it up. So they or can't like opened it or mm -hmm. whatever. Like, you know, if you're like open a camera, you're like, fuck this camera, send it back or you, whatever. Like buyer's remorse so stuff. What do they do with the pallets? They sell it for a reduced they just, price? Yeah, they sell them. How do you like buy a, those pallets? Just uh, on eBay? They're on, they're on Facebook. No, just go on Facebook Marketplace and look up like Amazon return, return pallets. And it's most of it's just stuff people get buyer's remorse on or whatever. And they have all kinds of crazy shit, bro. Like iPads. I bought one that had like 10 iPads in it, Apple Watches drones uh all, all the good shit so anyways mm -hmm. i spent like literally eight thousand dollars like all my the money i worked up until then bought that stacked it up kept flipping that flipping that and then i sold my car bought more inventory flipped that whatever and then uh 2020 was over i was still shooting videos and stuff too during 2020 that was over um and then pathfinder started picking up again um everything started growing and then yeah, made um, start again financially looking good, buying a house, whatever. Um, While still doing the eBay, or did you stop that? It was yeah. When we when we moved into the house, we had the eBay inventory room, and then we we're just like kind of over it. We're like, fuck this, like you know, what I mean, like we sold everything off and gave it away. I was telling people like how I made, I, but I literally put my barber. On. I was like. All this shit, bro, you could sell it. And there's probably, like, a, at least a couple thousand dollars in here. Like, And I just gave him all this stuff. And he just, like, it sat in his shop. And I don't even know what he did with it, honestly. Uh, but Some people, people don't, just don't, don't do it. That, you know what I mean? So, bone in them. Um, and then, well, yeah. Uh, why, though? Why were you over it? Because it was so, so time-consuming. It was time-consuming. Pathfinder was and... busy. There was a lot. Like, people would, would return and complain. And, like, it was just, like, an getting, yeah, too annoying. And it was tedious. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was great during 2020, like, when mm -hmm. there wasn't shit going on. But then moving into, like, the next year, yeah, when we moved into the house, we're like, we don't want to have, like, an inventory room. Like, we were about to have, uh, not the baby, but, like, yeah, it was coming. Like, you know what I mean? All that shit. So, um... We're like, this is a fresh start. It's like a new house. We're just going to do like a clean start. Uh, then uh, what year was it? Like 21 or 22, we start bringing on like team members to Pathfinder. Like uh, I was was so against it. I didn't want to freaking scale it or whatever. I just didn't think anyone could do it. So I was like just doing everything. And I didn't want to give up any of the profits or any of the money. I was like, I'm just going to lose money on stupid people. Like I don't want to do it. Then finally the baby was born. So she was born in... I think at the end of 21, at 22, I don't remember, whatever. Whenever she was born, uh, it was November 26th. I just forget the year. <laughs> 22 or 21. One of those years. <laughs> I think 22. <laughs> She's two now. Whatever, the, however the math works out on it. <laughs> just turned two? <laughs> just turned two, November 26th. We'll go with 21. Yeah. So. 
<laughs> he said, I'll make a fucking hundred grand, but you asked me to subtract two or one. I'm not your man. Anyways, the baby is born, <laughs> and Judy was doing a lot of, like, the back-end work and, like, the stuff to keep it. She was, like, the other half of the business. And all of a sudden, half the business, like, was gone. And so, mm-hmm. like, it started, like, kind of tanking. Like, I was just losing so much money. And I was like, fuck, dude, I got to hire someone or I got to get someone to replace what she did. Um, so then I hired our first, like, uh, it was a VA uh, employee and she took, like, she started managing the social medias and doing like little graphics and stuff. And, uh, that was so dope. I was like, yo, this is sick. And then we started bringing on people, oops, people here in Vegas. We hired like our first like round of team jazz, uh, Austin, uh, Cam, um, who else? Who else was Angel, um, Chandler was a part of the team for a while. Um, so we started building like a, a team, like a real organization. Um, started doing sales. Uh, business started go- was going really well. And so that's kind of like up to up to now. Um, this year took like a little bit of a correct like a correction. So we lost some business and I had to like downsize the team, which is like hard. Um, but we're cranking, you know what I mean? And everything's going good and uh Shit, yeah. Now that's up to speed. That's Pathfinder now in its current Straight state of up affairs. To Pathfinder, man. Well, I think uh, you're doing some pretty badass shit in the city. Um, you know, anytime there's cameras out, it gets interesting. <laughs> but how did how the hell did you get into movies? Uh, I'm sure you know. You're what do you what do you edit with? What uh, software? Do you use? Premiere. Premiere. So you, I mean, you have the juice in Premiere, and I'm, I'm sure the people you're hiring if. If that's the role that they're doing, they know what the fuck they're doing. So from music video, you kind of know what the fuck you're doing. But to have the the the, I guess the the visuals in your head to be able to direct and like move into uh, I guess like the promotion videos for like the film. for the solar yeah. and, and and film and shit like that. Yeah, that's a whole different ball game. How did you get into that? So. So solar, like corporate commercials, we just did a big ass uh, corporate commercial. Um, it was dope. We cashed out on it. But so in my mind, okay, the the first solar shit was basically solar clients weren't showing up to film their shit. So I was like, all right, we got to do skits and their regular like info shit that like most we call them talking heads was doing no traffic. It's like every entrepreneur style shit, like the shit I put out, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um their shit like that wasn't doing traffic or whatever. So we're like, we got to do skits and start innovating and doing shit. And if we do the skits, we just hire people in town, whatever. We don't need to uh, fucking deal with the client. They're, all our clients are all over the United States, like Florida, Arizona, Utah, California, Oregon, uh, Texas. So that's how come I travel a lot too. Um, but so I was like, all right, we don't have to travel. We'll just see it here. We'll do it. So we started brainstorming ideas or whatever. And then from just running a team and like, I don't know, people looking at me as, like, a leader. I just, like, kind of make the shit, make the plays. Like, all right, you're going to do this. We're going to do this. This is that general idea. We're going to come up with some shit. We're going to do it. Let's just do our fucking best. Like, you know what I mean? And get everyone in one place, and then some shit usually comes out, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So uh, that's how that shit went down. And then, again, like, the market kind of correct. For us, like, uh, and it was my fault. I broke my wrist uh, fucking skateboarding, and I stopped selling. And so it was totally my fault that my business fucking took a downward trajectory, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So, um, and when that was happening, I I had more time. So I was like, okay, what do I want to do? Uh, I was like the, the next level of this career is like film, TV shows, uh, fucking higher end commercials, whatever, bigger productions It's kind of like, and it still is. Uh, and I'll share like our, our direction, uh, coming up. But, um, so my boy Andy, who I started Pathfinder with, uh, he's super dope. We did that little short like horror film thing for Halloween. It was all right, but we're both practicing. We're just trying to get better. You know what I mean? It wasn't Fuck like yeah, a, it takes time, man. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of like how we got into that shit. And so for me, the the only way out was like, okay, the next biggest shit is like sell a TV show. So we filmed and produced a whole fucking TV show, um, but then no one wanted to buy it. There's like so many politics in that fucking shit too. Like you have to get an agent, they go back and forth, whatever, you could get funding. Anyways, we don't have the like the network to really like sell a TV show and make any type of money. Mm-hmm. Um, so we tried a uh, handful of people, they didn't want to pick it up. And producing a whole TV show, it's not fucking easy. It took us like a month. Like <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it took some time and it took a lot of energy and i was like i don't know if we want to do that again 
um, un unless we like secure a deal first, like, Hey, you want this type of TV show? Cool. Do you have a deal? Cool. Let's make it. We'll get paid to make it. Whether how you do you, how do you get it. to that point? Is that just, just straight word of mouth and how you sell yourself? It's like network. Yeah. It's like leverage. It's like, so networks like Netflix, uh, fucking any network there is, uh, has their like, like preferred vendors, production companies. So mm -hmm. they're preferred vendors and they'll like sell a deal with a production company. Like, okay, here, we're going to give you fucking uh, $10 million. We want like three movies and four TV shows, whatever, whatever that gets you, or might only be like a series or something. So like, okay, cool. So they take the money. They don't have the ideas. So these production companies are always on the lookout. They have like agents that work for them and or like independent agents that know have relationships with them. And they basically, when they come across someone like me who is on the fucking ground doing the work, they'll take their work and present it to the production company. If the production company wants it and they like it and they wanna take it and run with it and do their fucking thing and sell it back to Netflix, they offer you a co-production deal, which is like a very fucking, it's like you'll get like 1% and they'll pay you up front like 10 grand or some shit. Mm -hmm. But they're going to make like fucking $10 million off it, right? So you're getting fucked. Um, and uh, Wait, this is part of paying your yeah, dues. Yeah, that's literally yeah. what every fucking person told Unfortunately. me. Unfortunately. I, I was down. I was like, yeah, fuck it, whatever, bro. If you guys want to do it, buy it, like take it. Um, but anyways, I didn't even want to do that. So that's just kind of it. It's like you just have to have the right network of people who trust each other with money to like then have an idea that they like, that they want to like push through that, like that. Funnel, funnel basically or yeah. whatever so that's how that shit kind of works um so i was like all right went through that whole thing um and then i was like what are we good at corporate commercials so we started just uh and we're big in the solar industry so we started reaching out and we just did a commercial for or like work for solar edge and they're like uh they're a huge fucking company you probably have solar edge on your house they're like the parts that uh the inverter you actually, I think you do have a solar edge inverter. Like the energy comes from the panels, it goes through solar edge technology, and then it goes into your house. So that mm -hmm. they, and they're in every fucking so, solar, solar edge is the converter from the panels to the house. Yeah, that's okay. the name of the company. Gotcha. And there's only two of them. There's solar edge and Enphase. So they're like fucking billion dollar companies. Uh, mm -hmm. They're like a three point two billion dollar company. We just did like work, a bunch of work for them, um, and it was super dope. So I was like, okay, that's what we need to do. Is just bigger, high end commercials uh as well as like I, I like alex hermosi a lot and he's like just solve richer people's problems do the same thing just solve richer people's problems so i'm like oh, all right that's what i need to do so we started reaching out to um the 2024 elections coming up who's running like senators and congress so mm -hmm. we started doing a cold outreach campaign to all the candidates that are running and my like sales calendar has been like booked so that's been huge um and it's just like corporate production so and I guess it all comes back to like, why am I doing this or what's the reason for it? And ultimately, I just want to create freedom, right? And like have a lot of money to like not have to worry about shit and leverage my time however I want to do it. And the only way, like the only tool I have to get there is the a camera. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Well, shit, that camera so, is taking you thus far. So, so like that's... That's the goal. That's really why I do everything, you know, for the family to be able to live comfortably and freely. And um, that's really and it's kind of an ironic and that's the balance that I struggle with. It's like if I grow the business and make more money, it takes time away from my family. But if I take more time with my family, the business shrinks, it mm -hmm. like contracts and you lose like you don't have as much money. So like that's Trying kind of the balance, balance that, and I'm yeah. grateful that I get to choose like, all right, I'm going to do this with them or do, you know what I mean? Do, mm -hmm. Are you good or? Oh, I'm just checking. Yeah. Oh, okay. One man crew, <laughs> man. I got to make sure everything is good. Everything's running so <laughs> we're good. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So it's just like balancing that and then taking the time. Like sometimes like it's so weird how it's worked like the past few years. It's like one year like i'll take the whole month of december off and then the next year i'll like work every fucking single day in december and then the next year i'll take the whole month off and it's like been like that the last like three or four years but this year is looking like i might take the whole december off but i'm like okay how do i not do that and just keep it pushing like you know because mm -hmm. i could kick it but every time i do that it's like a fucking like a rat race in the beginning of the year. like all right well, let's fucking go because i took the whole month off yeah. <laughs> you know so uh and just like weekends or something like that yeah just take it i mean even like i still work every day but then i'll like stop at like four you know and then like i what time you started 
well, I get up at five and I consider like uh, my, so I work on myself from like five to like eight mm -hmm. and then eight to like 10 is family breakfast, getting the girl ready, all that stuff. And then 10 to like four is like work basically. Um, sometimes I work later. Like if I have like the certain clients that just have like high demands or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's uh, important, then I'll do like later calls or whatever the case is. But um, yeah, overall, bro, I'm just fucking grateful and I'm excited. I'm fucking blessed and so thankful to be here in, at your podcast and fucking meet such a cool dude uh, I appreciate like yourself, it, bro. bro. Appreciate and it. That's, that's right. it. <laughs> that's yeah, it, bro. You, but you know what, man? When it comes down to, to it, you put the work in, though. Yeah. You put in the work. You said you have. You've had two major life failures, and I'm sure the things that you learned from those failures are so invaluable that you wouldn't be in the position that you are without those. Yeah. It's all the stepping stone to the next point, like you said. When you pop the champagne, pop the champagne, baby. Because some shit is fucking up. Well, this is the champagne being popped right now. The right. the the flexibility and the and the uh, um, I guess fortunate situation that you're in that you can take all the fucking December off and the worst <laughs> thing you got to worry about is I fucking have to go work hard at the beginning of the year <laughs> bro you fucking have uh, done the damn thing good yeah. for you man yeah. good for you that shit is badass man Appreciate oh what do you what do you have coming forward what like I know you said more corporate uh, commercials and making solve richer people's problems so um, what about the movies are you are you do you want to dabble in that? Do you have any love in making movies? Movies is dope, bro. That's like kind of what it's, it's like such a, it's such a crazy, like this is my real life ass dilemma. You could see me solve my face, solve these fucking problems on camera. Like making money to me is like, is pretty important. Um, and like the more money that I make, I could provide for more people. Like it's not just my family anymore. It's like, six other families that yeah. need to be provided for you know what i mean so like doing that with the business like taking on clients provides for them and with a team you need a team to be able to do movies like you know mm -hmm. what i mean you need a lot of people around you to be able to do bigger things and so the contrast is like okay we need to get more clients to make more money but then like to then we have to like carve out time to like make a movie and then uh Cause it's like when I make a move or we make a fucking short or whatever, it costs me a lot of no one. It doesn't fucking cost anybody else money. It costs me fucking money because I got time like allocated the to six, make that movie. Yeah, yeah, I got like however many guys, and then I have to hire the actors, and then I got to pay for the edits, the editors. Like not that I like have to pay for them, but they're on the clock fucking mm -hmm. editing our shit. Like you know what I mean? So it's like there's no direct return coming in when we're like working on projects like that so from like the business owner's part it's like i i do have a love for it and i still want to pursue movies i think that like i have actually like when i take it back because uh fuck i suck at talking bro no you're good man i know it's a lot <laughs> oh, it's a shit. lot uh, like the, in today's day and age if you have enough leverage you could do anything so like for example i think instead of thinking so big like a movie it's like what if we did an instagram short like a short series like a one minute two minute instagram post but it's like a mini movie and it's like That's in those two minutes awesome it's a idea. character they're going through some shit whatever and then the next week the next fucking episode drops mm -hmm. and it's just like same thing it's like the character i have this really dope idea of like this dude uh being like a regular guy and then he like fucking falls off a ladder or something and he loses his job and then like his wife divorces him and then he fucking goes homeless and he goes broke and then like kills himself and then up. all of a sudden he like meets a billionaire or something and they're like come here or whatever and then he becomes like a fucking billionaire or something like and it could be just like a crazy uh downward spiral and like come up or whatever mm -hmm. but to do that in like two minute episodes at a time and then if that gets really popular right like if you have a fan base or something then they're like oh i want to see more and more and more then you get enough attention then you could leverage that to anybody like mm -hmm. and people will want it then people come to you and they're like hey i want to buy your fucking show or your idea or whatever so you just got to get to that point um but yeah it takes time and commitment and all that shit's hard yeah. as well as like you know being there for the family, a dad, a husband, you know, a freaking leader for people and um and then working on myself, like trying to hit the gym. I'm on like two weeks straight of every single day. So you know what I mean? You gotta get um, in the gym with me one of these days, man. <laughs> yeah, that would be dope. We could fuck Where's Fit Club up? at? 
uh, by LVAC on um, like the 95 and Lake Mead. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's where it's at? Yeah. Oh, that's I was actually dope. surprised, like right behind the in and out No shit. Mm-hmm. That's where it's at? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. I like that. I grew up like after, not grew up, but like after, like right before I went to jail and all that shit. It's like the area I lived in from like 23 to like 25 ish yeah so, that, it's a dope area i like it yeah they have another one on like hacienda and valley view oh okay. shit, some, shit some that whatever. might be closer to me honestly because i'm on like russell and 215 so if i just go straight down russell or straight down hacienda, by ikea yeah yeah actually it's probably like 10 minutes away from you yeah so it's not too bad man i get a free pass man a free oh, buddy pass once a go. month yeah let's run i gotta it, lock you in That'd man i gotta lock you in because we're, we're about to get fucked up i'm down and, and in all the best ways possible <laughs> i also am getting um homie's been hitting me up um to box so um what? yeah I'm, I'm not teaching anymore or nothing like that we're just going over people are coming over we're gonna do some light sparring oh okay hitting the mitts, shit like that uh That'd you're more tight. than welcome to join That'd be some more than welcome to join man. yeah yeah that's what we're doing it for uh leaving my my super fighting days in the past for now you're a fighter bro uh, just train just oh, train okay, okay. uh i will never discredit any of these guys that really do this shit but i'd love to get in there and get a little dirty and yeah and get fucked up or do some fucking up so yeah, uh, yeah that's no, like um, an animal instinct bro. yeah man, i love it bro i love it it keeps me on my toes makes me feel alive <laughs> <laughs> yeah bro that's crazy yeah i should try it yeah I man i'm it. um when i get it going i'm probably either gonna get started either this sunday or next weekend um and then the maybe a day during the week but whenever i get started i'll let you know with the fit club shit i'll let you know for sure dope but uh oscar man has been a fucking awesome time talking you know like you've taken you at face value bro and then hearing your story it's so <laughs> fucking like opposite <laughs> so you look squeaky uh, clean but you uh, done did some fucking weird shit uh, and the da's bro. been on you i feel like i was in an episode of something on fx tonight uh, but no bro. man i had a really good time talking to you and Appreciate and seeing you. your vision and seeing what you do and uh you're fucking badass dude i, I really hope i get to work with you again in the future but um anytime somebody gets on talk smack with mac for the first time i sit back i'd be quiet and if there's anything extra you want the people watching to know uh any social media handles anything like that this your time oh follow me at uh www dot no i was, I was gonna try <laughs> to do a punchline but <laughs> so just oscar cardona anywhere um oscar dona on instagram it's like my first and last name put together crunched so uh yeah that's where you can find me pathfinder productions on the internet instagram wherever you want to look it up website uh yeah mac thank you for having me bro i appreciate you uh let me talk i feel like you know i tried to Say some stuff. <laughs> oh, man. You, you, there's some fucking good juicy shit in this podcast. I had a fucking good time. Well, let's go. Good time listening, man. It, you know, it's always easy when somebody gets on the podcast and they know how to fucking talk. Shit. I've, I've had... <laughs> I've had I've had some fighters on my podcast, and uh, when I tell you it doesn't get more motherfucking drier than a than a fire uh, uh, fighter, man, it's like, bro, I'm I have you on my podcast, and we're talking about you, and you're still not giving me shit. Uh, he's like, I ain't done shit. Uh, when well, you was fighting, no. <laughs> How was your fight? How'd you feel going up to your fight? It was good. <laughs> How'd you feel like when you're about to enter the cage? All right. <laughs> Uh-oh. What'd you do to prepare for this fight? I trained hard. <laughs> I'm like, all right, thank you for your time, man. Uh, you have a good one. <laughs> we'll catch hey, you on the next yeah, one. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you, man. That sums it up for this episode of Talk Smack with Mac. Make sure you guys tune into everything that Oscar and Pathfinder is doing, man. He, this motherfucker is just doing big shit. Ooh. And at only 33, yeah? Yeah, 33. 33 years old, man. What's going to happen at 40? What's going to happen at 45? You know, that's the shit that gets me fucking Ooh, excited bro, in 45? the morning. Oh, shit. I feel like I'm in our 40s, man, we're just going to be chilling. Bro. Like grinding, but Dude. chilling like on an island somewhere and then just having our team. Just, I'm trying to be like you. I'm going to get big God shit fucking popping, bro. By the time for you, you're going to see some shit on Netflix, on HBO, on fucking some TV commercials that we've produced. 45? Bro, shit. Trying to take over the motherfucking world by then. At that age, we all. (laughs) (laughs) I'm telling you. Hey, man, we out, people. Peace.
Oh, what? Oh.